Have you ever wondered how your childhood has shaped you into who you are today? Childhood, adulthood, and into parenthood and how it all just comes full circle and how breaking those generational cycles takes you to do it. I'll take you through the key moments and experiences that have helped shape me into the person that I am today. Growing up in a small town, my graduating class was 50. My childhood was a mix of joy, tradition, and challenges. My parents were young and there was a lot of drinking and partying around me. All of the parents were young. Family gatherings were lively, often filled with laughter, but also sometimes ended in fighting. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents and I was so close to them. They played a significant role in my upbringing, providing stability and love. My grandparents were my sanctuary, a place where I always felt safe and cherished. Their stories, wisdom, and unconditional love shaped my early years and provided a foundation of values that I still hold dear to this day. I was super close. I was inseparable from my parents. We did everything together. However, my childhood wasn't always easy. I was teased on, I was picked on a lot, which made me feel the need to try so hard to fit in and not be picked on. I was the kid with a deformity. I have club feet, if some of you didn't know. And I was definitely picked on for that. I was teased about how white I was or the way I walked, the way I laughed, what I wore, and so many countless other things. These experiences made me feel so isolated and so self-conscious that I still am self-conscious to this day constantly striving for acceptance. I grew up surrounded by so many children, including some cousins that I was very close to. My dad taught me the value of hard work and I started working from a super young age. I was babysitting and cleaning shops since I was about 11 or 12. And these early jobs taught me the responsibility and the importance of earning my own money. I can still remember getting paid like 50 bucks for my first babysitting job. It was like a huge sense of pride that when I received pretty much my first paycheck. And then in my early teens, you would always find me with my friends and my horses. That was a huge passion of mine that brought immense joy and such a sense of freedom. We would ride through the fields, ride through the rivers. We would sing, we would laugh. We, I mean, we would just travel miles on our horses. They were some of the most memorable moments of my life. As I entered high school, of course, boys took me away from the horses and I found alcohol. Drinking made me feel like I fit in, people liked me, and I enjoyed the fun and the acceptance that it brought. Despite my drinking, I managed to avoid getting in serious trouble. The only trouble I got in was I was suspended from one volleyball game, but I was the only one in my group who actually didn't get an MIP, minor in possession despite coming close so many times. I jumped a lot of fences. I still remember my mom, or I still remember a mom telling my mom, Megan will be the first to get an MIP. Well, guess what? She ate her own words and her daughter got her first MIP. Funny how that works. Small town life meant everyone knew everyone and each other's business. My boyfriend was a few years older than me. Of course, our parents were totally okay with it. It was an, like a known relationship and you know, Dating older introduced me to a whole different crowd of, you know, almost 20, 21 years old, celebrating life. And I found myself fitting into that crowd of alcohol as well. Transitioning into adulthood brought its own set of challenges and discoveries. I went to the University of Oregon, go Ducks, just for a little bit, but my drinking habits got the better of me. My dad would say that I got a bachelor's in alcoholism. The university, experience was a blur of parties and missed opportunities. I remember the excitement of campus life. I remember football games and the fill of new found freedom coming from a small town, going to a big town and all the late night study sessions and the spontaneous adventures. However, I also recall getting on academic, on academic probation, the hangovers, the missed classes and the feeling of just drifting without direction. Eventually I came back home. I started working and I continued to drink. Dated a younger boy, not the best decision of my life. Had my heart broken. And then I eventually found my husband, which you all know, the one behind the scenes, Jonathan. My parents got divorced during this time, completely changing the family dynamic that I grew up with. 
I went from inseparable to separated. It was not a fun feeling. And then your boyfriend goes off to war and then you really feel really <laughs> out of place. The divorce caused a significant strain on my relationship with my parents and there were moments some we didn't speak for a while. The once inseparable bond with them felt shattered. The stability and the unity that I once knew growing up replaced by tension and silence was not a good feeling. Despite all this, I tried to navigate life as it happened, building new relationships and finding my path. Jonathan's military deployments added a whole nother layer of complexity. We met at a coming home party from Iraq and our relationship was built amidst celebrations and farewells. And our first date was after attending an alcoholic's funeral. We went back to my house, started drinking, and then the next day we were on our date. And we started living together shortly after. And then our life was just a series of hellos and goodbyes. Each one marked by a party, of course. And then in April, 2014, we ended up getting married in Vegas, continuing our life of celebrations. And then in the summer of 2015, we bought our first house, sitting on the floor, drinking champagne. What do you do? You just party because you got a new house. That August, Late August, I found out that I was pregnant and we also got our first dog. But my world completely shattered. Mid-August, my grandpa, the one that like still holds so dear to my heart, he passed away. That call at 4.30 in the morning, it just crushed my whole entire world. I, I mean, I'm sure some of you have lost people that are close to you. Little did I know, I was starting to grow a little human and I didn't know yet. The pain of losing my grandpa, he was a pillar of strength and love in my life. Balancing the joy of expecting a child with the grief of his absence was one of the hardest periods of my life. I literally remember the phone call so vividly and that whole entire day like it was yesterday. Since I was on Clomid, my doctor wanted to see me that morning because I hadn't got a positive test yet and Six hours later after I got the phone call, she wanted to give me these little pills that would get rid of the follicles, that would get rid of the follicles, and I did not want to take them. Not at all. I was like, I didn't tell her my grandpa just passed away, but I held myself together, left, and then went home, sat on the couch, drank champagne, surrounded by flowers. The next morning, I woke up and I had a positive test. Thank you you Jesus. It was an unbearable time. Jonathan was working graveyard. I was all alone. My grandpa just passed away. I was just sitting on the couch. I had some cramping, didn't know what was happening. Little did I know there's this little thing called implantation. And the day that my grandpa died was the day that she did her thing and started creating a little human inside of me. Fast forward, we got past the funeral and I got to my 20 week checkup. That is when I found out that I, I was having a little baby girl. The tears of joy filled my eyes at the thought of a little mini me. I just could picture her. It was so indescribable. However, my pregnancy was a complicated one by placenta previa, which then later turned into vasa previa, which ended up in an early delivery. I had her at 34 weeks. Little did I know I was having strong contractions that day and she was coming early regardless. So at the end of March, little Emma was born a VSC section and the nurse came out and told me the cord was wrapped around her neck four times. Well, that had been the biggest fear of my whole entire pregnancy. Reflecting on it now, there were so many obstacles trying to keep her from me. I swear she was meant to be here. She was placed on this earth for a reason because nothing was stopping her. Finding out I was pregnant was so exciting and challenging because especially after trying for a year and a couple of miscarriages, I was on Clomid when I finally got pregnant and the day that my grandpa left this world. But seven months later, at 34 weeks, she arrived. My grandma was the first one I told I was pregnant. We spent 16 days in the NICU. We brought her home on April 15th. So she, yeah, she was born March 30th, came home April 15th. But then just three days later was my birthday and one of my cats had passed away. He had been sick for two weeks and it was just terrifying, heartbreaking. But broke down, drank a bottle of wine making one of the first times of many pumping around alcohol. It was an emotional roller coaster, welcoming Emma home and losing my cat within days. It was freaking intense. With all of that being said, I often got heavily intoxicated, but Jonathan normally didn't drink near as much as I did. He stayed sober for the most part. We made new friends, drank even more, 
I got pregnant with Colton in summer of 2017. The day before I took my pregnancy test, I was drinking whipped vodka while pushing Emma in a stroller. I woke up hungover, peed on a stick, finding out that I was pregnant. Ended up going hungover on the boat, same day. Then fast forward to the solar eclipse. There was a big moment, right? You gotta celebrate. So I don't know, I was like 11 to 14 weeks pregnant. I was out of my first trimester, but I had mimosas. But you know what? Colton came out for the most part just fine. He might be just like me in many ways. My anxiety with him was a lot different being pregnant. Or like when I was pregnant with him, it was a lot different. I had so much anxiety. And then to add on top of that, one of my friends had a tragic loss of her baby that November that I was pregnant with Colton and it was so traumatic. And that's a total different story for a different day. And I hope one day she will share because she is extraordinarily strong. Despite all of my struggles, I also had to take care of some of my mother-in-law's daycare kids for a little while. Again, another long story, it all collides. But I literally, you are a special breed of human if you're a teacher or a daycare provider. I couldn't do it, I was could not emotionally handle it. But Colton was born in March of 2018 and with each pregnancy, it brought its own set of challenges and joys, which shaped me as a mother. The weight of the responsibility, the fear of repeating past mistakes, and the hope for a better future for my children were constant companions. I wanted to break a generational cycle, and here we are, 10 months later, working on breaking that. Our life just kept continuing for the longest time around alcohol, the celebrations, we, after Colton was born, we had Cinco de Mayo, we had 4th of July, we moved to Idaho that November, we had a going away party. And then once in Idaho, I was super depressed. As soon as my mom left, I just started drinking and it was hard leaving my family and friends, the only ones that I've known my whole entire life. It was incredibly tough. The sense of isolation and longing for familiar faces and places weighed heavy on me. I made new friends, and our activities often involved brunches and wine tours. I even passed out on a wine bus once, which is super embarrassing. You shouldn't drink a bottle of champagne before you go drink a ton of wine. Initially, visitors would come often and drinking was always involved. We'd always have rogue soda, start out in the morning drinking, drinking on hikes, just all day drinking sessions. Fast forward to the C word era, which intensified my struggles with alcohol. And during the lockdown, I drank almost every day, drunk by noon. The stress of potty training, because what else do you do during a lockdown? And managing a household during a pandemic pushed me to drink even more. And then I decided to get a job as a server and bartender right before COVID started, which then, you know, everybody comes to the bar to get drunk because you have nothing else to do. So drinking continued. The owner would buy us shots and I found myself taking shots with customers regularly. Yes, the owner was fully aware. The environment only fueled the dependency of alcohol. During all of this, again, I lost a cat on my birthday so many years prior, and then bam, April 2020, lost my cat right after my birthday. 16 years, I've had him since I was a junior in high school. It was so heartbreaking to me. I still shed tears over his loss. It was horrible, the kids were sad, and to this day when we see a rainbow, we're like, look, sappy. Sabby's here to say hi. Coupled with ongoing grief of losing my grandpa, moving away from my home state, my heart was just heavy and I just found myself drinking to mask all of these emotions. We bought a side-by-side -side and a trailer for camping and exploring, which meant more drinking, found a new crowd, drank more from sunup to sundown, blackouts on rides, me, not him, I didn't drive. I had some horrid camping trips where I was just hung over due to drinking, or obviously camping trips I would ruin because I was just so miserable. I'd sleep in till 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock and just be, you know, drunk again from the, as soon as I stepped out of the trailer, start drinking. You gotta have drinks when you wait, when you go camping, right? But through this adventure, through this life changing experience last July, first sober experience camping and it was amazing. I got home and I got so much done. It didn't drag on through the week. It literally got done same day, 
everything clean, done, engaged, hiked, everything. What camping is supposed to be. Not just sitting around a fire drinking the whole time like I was. Concerts with girlfriends often ended also with me drunk and not remembering what's going on. Waking up, crap, my husband's pissed off at me. What did I do? Oh crap, did I say something mean? Was I rude? Getting kicked out of concerts. I mean, waking up near a toilet or on the couch. I don't know. It just was awful. I used to stay outside drinking while the kids were put to bed. I didn't usually do bedtime routines. Yes, I did, but not as often as I should have. But now we snuggle before bed. We say our prayers every night. My kids no longer have to ask daddy why I'm acting certain ways or deal with my anger outbursts and short temper. I am present and engaged and we do things together all the time as a family now. I don't try to go off and be selfish like I was all because of alcohol. I look forward to every moment. The transition from being a parent who drinks to a sober present parent has been so transformative. I now cherish the small moments, bedtime stories, bedtime prayers, family meals, outside with them, watching them play, and simply just being there for my children. The joy and fulfillment I find in these moments far surpass any fleeting pleasure alcohol ever brought. Each stage of life has taught me invaluable lessons. From my childhood, I learned the importance of curiosity and imagination despite the chaos around me. My grandparents and parents instilled me the value of hard work and resilience. Adulthood taught me resilience, the value of hard work, and the impact of life choices on personal growth. I learned to navigate through heartbreak, grief, loss, new beginnings, and parenthood has shown me the power of love, the importance of being a role model. It's so important. And the joy of creating lasting memories. It taught me, it's taught me to be present, patient, to cherish every moment. Life is a continuous journey of growth and learning and each stage prepares us for the next. Reflecting on my experiences, I am grateful for the challenges and joys that have shaped me into who I am today. I look forward to the future with hope and excitement, knowing that every phase of life brings new opportunities and lessons. I really appreciate you guys watching and taking the time to listen to my journey from my childhood, adulthood, and parenthood. Life is filled with so many ups and downs, but each stage has its own unique lessons and joys. Reflecting on my experiences, I realize how much I've grown and how every challenge has shaped me into the person I am today. And I get to be here for you guys. I get to be here for my children. I get to be present. So if you're struggling with any aspect of your life, know that you are not alone. It's okay to seek help. Put your pride away. Lean on others for support. Life is a continuous journey of growth and every phase brings new opportunities and lessons. I would love to hear your thoughts and experiences, so please share them in the comments below so we can help support each other on this journey. If you found this video helpful, make sure to check out my other videos. I'm here to help you. I love being here. And just remember, it takes just putting your mind to it and just doing it. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to check out my other videos for more insights and tips. Stay strong, stay informed, and take care of yourself. I will see you in the next video.